So, there are already some great talks about Wi-Fi security, uh, and I will continue in that trend, hopefully. So I am Mati van Oofan, together with uh, some uh, collaborators from Kent University. Uh, we basically studied Wi-Fi frame injection. And, yeah, let me give a brief introduction to what I mean with frame injection. Normally, for example, your Linux kernel or your network card uh, will construct Wi-Fi frames um, and will construct a Wi-Fi header for you. But of course, in experiments, we want to construct our own Wi-Fi frames. We want to control every bit of it, and then we want to send that Wi-Fi frame. And in a way, you might think, what could possibly go wrong? I thought that myself a few years ago, but there are surprisingly many things that actually can go wrong in practice. So maybe a first a quick introduction. How can you, for example, inject a Wi-Fi frame in Linux? You can, for example, use Python with the Scapy library. You can uh, define the Wi-Fi frame that you want to inject. In this case, uh, this is a, the authentication frame because, yeah, the denial of service attacks in Wi-Fi are very common, unfortunately, like we had in the previous discussion. And you can basically construct the frame you want to send. And before that frame, you can also, well, you actually have to repent a so-called radio tap header on Linux. Let's specify some uh, properties of the frame you want to send. For example, the bit rate of this injected frame, the channel bandwidth, and so on. And this, in a sense, this meta header will be parsed by the Linux kernel, will then be stripped away, and it will never actually be transmitted. The second important thing to realize is that in Linux you can have what I call two types of uh, monitor mode. So monitor mode is a mode that your network card will uh, give you all the nearby Wi-Fi frames that it receives, even if it's, if it's not the network you're connected to. And you can put your network card in monitor mode and do nothing else with the network card. But there is also a second way to use this. This uh, is basically that you use your network card as a legitimate client or access point while simultaneously using it in monitor mode to inject frames. And this is actually very convenient because then you can use built-in functionality of Linux, for example, to connect to a network, and once you're connected, you can then use that same network card to start injecting frames. This is, for example, something we did previously in the frack attacks. Uh, there was, for example, an attack where we first connected to the network, where we then injected an encrypted fragment uh, and this was easy to implement because we were able to reuse some functionality of Linux to connect to the network and then send this normal encrypted fragment. But in our attack, we could then send two plain text fragments and a receiver would not realize that some of these uh, fragments were encrypted and some of these in plain text and then they were just combined. Now as you can see here, the original Wi-Fi frame here is then identified by a sequence number S, so all frames with the same sequence number, they belong together, and every fragment then has a certain number. And let's say you now want to inject these fragments using your uh, network card in your laptop, uh, then surprisingly many things can go wrong. One thing we noticed that if you use your network card in this mixed monitor mode, so where you're simultaneously acting as a client on an access point and in monitor mode, then all network cards on Linux will overwrite the sequence number and the fragment number. Meaning if you don't realize this, these frames that you are injecting uh, will not be transmitted as you are telling the Linux kernel to. And that means that it would not be possible to detect some of these vulnerabilities. Uh, and we actually noticed this during our disclosure of this research, um, that we had to patch this to make sure that uh, the companies could properly test our attack. Because the attack was sometimes failing uh, because of this issue. So in this case, we fixed the Linux kernel to uh, address this. Uh, but even if we address this, sometimes the firmware of network cards were still overwriting some of these fields. And that was not the only problem we encountered. Uh, another problem we encountered is that, yeah, the header also needs to have a flag that indicates that this is the last fragment of a sequence of fragments. Because otherwise you don't know, did I receive all fragments and when can I reassemble them? It turns out that on some network cards, if you set this flag, if you set more fragments will still follow. 
Some network cards then just don't set the frame. And you don't realize this. Only if you use a second independent Wi-Fi network card in monitor mode would you realize your frame is not transmitted. So you might be performing experiments, you might be thinking my frame gets transmitted, but that's not the case. And we can basically continue the story, we can go over all this, these fields in the Wi-Fi header, and with pretty much each of one there is a problem. One common problem that is actually already a, a bit known is that uh, if you put some network cards into monitor mode and then transmit a frame, the network card in monitor mode will keep retransmitting that injected frame even if you already received an acknowledgement. That can slow down some experiments. But what's even more annoying is that if you have a network card in monitor mode and you send a frame, if someone else send a frame towards your network card in monitor mode, it won't send an acknowledgement back. And this is already a, a bit known. But it's still problematic because again, some access points, if you pretend to be a client and you don't acknowledge certain frames while connecting to an access point, the access point will just think, oh, the client is now out of range, actually I'm going to kill the connection. So this is another problem uh, that we encountered. Another interesting problem with a different network card is that if we use this network card in this uh, mixed mode uh, monitor, then you are unable to uh, spoof the sender address. And they again, we would then try to reject the frame, and you wouldn't realize anything going wrong unless you were having a second network card in monitor mode to really verify whether frames are transmitted properly. Um, I, I, I can give some more examples. You also, instead of fragmenting frames, you can aggregate smaller frames in a larger frame. Uh, then you can specify that with a flag in the Wi-Fi header saying, this is an aggregated frame. And here we again notice that certain network cards, if you want to inject a frame with that flag set, it's again just not transmitted. Another interesting thing is you can also give a certain priority to a frame. Um, and here we notice that if you inject certain Wi-Fi frames with a different priority, then they might get reordered uh, before they are transmitted. So, for instance, in the Linux user space, you might be sending frame A before frame B, but then your network work part might reorder them and send them in a different order. And that can be problematic in some experience, experiments where you really need to guarantee the order of the injected frames. And I will show an example of that in a bit. And basically, we also discovered a lot of other issues, and for that I would recommend that you read the paper. Uh, there are various edge cases where things can go wrong if you're really exploring uh, the depths of the Wi-Fi standard and limitations. So how did we address these issues? Because we want to prevent researchers from going through the same trouble. So we first and for all updated the radio tap standard, uh, which is used in Linux and also operating, other operating systems, so that you can tell uh, the operating system not to overwrite certain fields and that injected Wi-Fi frames also should not be reported uh, relative to each other. Um, but there is a small standard behind this radio track header, and we updated that standard. And yeah, if you use KP or perform Wi-Fi experiments, please use the following uh, header as shown here, because that will tell the Linux kernel uh, not to mess with your experiment, basically. We then also implemented this in the Linux kernel itself, and we upstreamed our patches. So if you're running a Linux kernel 5.11 or higher, uh, you're basically already running our code. Um, and we also modified some firmware, firmware as well to prevent some of these issues. Another thing that we did is that, yeah, often it can be difficult to get the same network card that someone else used in an experiment. And to address that, we, uh, together with the uh, co-authors from Ghent University, we made sure that the open Wi-Fi platform that they created is also compatible with our updates to the radio tab standard. So basically, open Wi-Fi is a completely open implementation of Wi-Fi, and it 
updated it to work with the latest, well, a newer Linux kernel that on that Linux kernel now includes our radio tab updates as well. But that basically means you can use open Wi-Fi with uh, common Wi-Fi tools like the Crack on Crack Attack tools to uh, run your experiments. Last but not least, we checked whether this really makes a difference. Like, are these really just edge cases but are not too important, or does this really have an impact on practice? And we did a short evaluation where we tested for one frag attack variant, where in the attack you're injecting a plain text screen right before completing the four-way handshake. On there, it's essential that your injected plain text frame is sent before the last message in the handshake, and you don't want them to accidentally be reordered. And we did this experiment against a few smartphones, and uh, yeah, we noticed three smartphones that were basically vulnerable that we didn't detect before. Uh, so against these uh, smartphones, you can inject a plain text data frame towards them, uh, while the client is still connecting to the Wi-Fi network. So that brings me to my conclusion. We basically wrote a tool to test how good your network card is at injecting Wi-Fi frames. It's available on GitHub. You can scan the QR code. If you do Wi-Fi experiments, I recommend you use a radio tab header and uh, a recent Linux kernel. With that, uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, and glad that you're all helping enhancing open Wi-Fi. Quick question about open Wi-Fi. Do you happen to know if they are working on having um, adding uh, 11AC or 11AX functionality to open Wi-Fi? Because last I checked, not today, but a few months ago, they haven't yet added that feature to open Wi-Fi. Well, that question would be an ideal question for one of my co-authors. Uh, I think they are planning to do that, but it's best to confirm with them there directly. Thank you. Maybe a quick question for me. Is there some sort of root cause why these errors were there or just implementation bugs? That's a good question. My hunch is that these are mainly like implementation bugs. And I think the underlying cause is that vendors will test whether their equipment works under normal uh, operations, when under, under normal conditions. And monitor mode is basically an exception that is sometimes used to debug things, but no one really tests it. Uh, so it's very easy for someone to make an update to a code on the firmware or the Linux kernel, with that, which then accidentally interferes with uh, monitor mode. So I didn't follow all the details, but did you find the attack manually, or I mean, can you actually? have more systematic ways to find uh, variants of these protocols, I mean, these vulnerabilities, or? Are you referring to actual implementation vulnerabilities or issues with Wi-Fi frames? Um, issues, issues of the in, uh, individual device vulnerabilities. I mean, do you, if, do you have any systematic ways to test? So maybe a quick background. So we first became aware of these issues when working on the flag attack research. Um, and from that, we realized it might be good to do a bit more systematic way. I, I didn't have the time to explain, but basically we tested network cards in these two monitor modes, so pure monitor mode, and then uh, these mixed monitor mode. We tried to inject various kinds of frames right you know, before you even start any cryptographic handshake, like the four-way handshake, then during the four-way handshake, then after the handshake, we try to have some um, breadth with the type of frames we sent, like data frames, fragmented frames, uh, aggregated frames. So I think we cover a good range, but there will be no doubt other types of frames which we haven't detected yet. Right. So that's still another problem. Okay. I, so, I was surprised that vendors didn't complain before about the Wi-Fi support. And maybe, maybe it's because they use specialized tools to test the injection instead of monitor mode. Do you think that this, is, this might be one cause? 
So I guess the question is which kind of tools do they use to test uh, uh, yeah, well, well, why the devices? Why didn't they, 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 they find the same issues that you found while you were testing, for example, this fragmentation? Yeah. Um, so the, uh, I think there might be two answers to that. The first is I think if you, they, they will test the normal behavior. So maybe if you inject a Wi-Fi packet that looks normal, where you're not trying to do funny things, that typically has a higher chance of working. But if you then inject the frame at an unexpected moment or with strange fields, uh, that is something they don't do, typically. So in research, we do special things, and those special things have a higher chance of going wrong. So I think that is one explanation. I think the other explanation is that um, Sometimes I'm not even sure if they use monitor mode at all in their tests. Like they might just have a client or access point implementation of some trusted vendor that was maybe manually tested, and then others tested devices are just tested in reference to that access point or client maybe. So, so basically I'm not sure that monitor mode is even used in all tests. Thanks. Let's thank the speaker again.